Good morning, Soma. This is an exciting day as we venture into a new season of what it means to be the church and gather house to house across our city in this new way. Rather than start a new series, which we'll be beginning next week on the book of Daniel, titling Flourishing as Exiles. I'm very excited about that, to dive into that book. But rather than start that this day, we want to lay a foundation that we're able to build off of in the days, weeks, and months ahead as we gather this way. And this foundation is something that is not outside the norm of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. But for us to just lean into this, recognize it, start here, and also give you an opportunity to have further conversations after this um, brief sermon. And this foundation is the foundation which will allow us to succeed in micro-missional communities and house-to-house gatherings in the weeks and months ahead. And the foundation is this. We are in need. We are in need. We are a needy people. And to recognize that, to notice that, to just claim that and say, yes, this is true. But also from this passage that you just read in John chapter 15, to recognize our needs in various ways and how they apply to ensuring that our micro-missional communities and our house-to-house gatherings are successful and fruitful in the days ahead. The first thing that we need to recognize our need for in order for this to be a fruitful time, we are in need of the Spirit. We're in need of the Spirit. John chapter 15 is right in the middle of John 14 through 16, which is Jesus' most extensive teaching on the Spirit of God. We see this in this passage in verse 5 when Jesus says that apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus says that of himself earlier in the gospel of John when it says, I can only do what the Father shows me to do. He can only do what the Spirit empowers him to do. This is true of the God-man Jesus. How much more so is it true of us? And think about our need for the Spirit in this environment. This isn't a time where we can just sit back and come in and watch and not have, uh, and just make it go through the motions. If this is to be successful, I'm just gonna say this you and I need God's presence to be there in our midst, transforming us, changing us pointing us to Jesus. My prayer is that in our house-to-house gatherings, the Spirit shows up in such a powerful way that His presence is palatable, that He's known, that we are tasting and seeing that the Lord is good in unique ways. We are needy for Him to show up. We need Him to point us to Jesus. We need Him To remind us, as verse 3 says, that we are clean because of the words Jesus said to us. But we are in need of God's presence. And so the invitation here, lean into our need for the Spirit and ask Him to show up powerfully in ways that we would never have expected so that we can be transformed as His disciples. So we're not just in need of the Spirit. Secondly, we're in need of one another. We're in need of one another. The culmination of this passage in verse 17 says this, what I, uh, oh, sorry, verse 17. These things I command you so that what? You will love one another. You will love one another. This is the recognition that we have as verse 9 says, we abide in his love, we keep his commands, and therefore abide so that we can be fruitful. We've been made friends of God. We're no longer slaves or servants. We are friends, loved, dearly loved children. And so therefore, now we get to express that in love for one another. That means we come prepared 
We come filled with God's Spirit, engaged in disciple-making practices, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. We are coming with a song, hymn, or spiritual song, something to bring to the table. You may have noticed that this is participatory. You're going to be reading and reciting. You're going to be singing with one another. It's not a passive experience just watching on a screen. Your presence is needed here to lean in. That's one of the reasons why we put together a playlist across all the music platforms is so that you can be listening to the songs that you'll be singing in the coming weeks and months. That playlist has all the songs that we'll be singing between now and the end of the year. So you can come be as already having listened to it throughout the week. Whether you're doing your dishes or cooking dinner, whether you listen to it as a family, as you are playing games or uh, doing schooling or you're on your way to work, listening to it on, in, on your commute, you are allowing God's presence to be filling you throughout the week so that when you come together, you're not coming only to receive, you're coming to give what you have received throughout the week. So you, we are in need of one another, but there's also tasks to be done. And these are opportunities for you to grow as, the, in, as a disciple in different ways. The different tasks are like facilitating. Somebody's going to facilitate. Need to be aware of the, what's coming up, what, what things are going to be recited, how the flow is, and it'll all be done by Wednesday before Sunday so you can go in and be prepared to know and be engaged in leading your micro MC in your house to house gathering that way. It may be hosting. You, this may be an opportunity for you to grow in biblical hospitality. We've developed a checklist for you to be able to know how to create an environment that people feel loved, cared for, and safe so they can dive into the Word and experience God's presence. This may be a chance for you to grow in music. Maybe you have a skill that has been hidden that you're unsure of using. This is a beautiful environment to use that. So rather than watching it on the screen, you can have somebody physically walking you through <laughs> musical worship. <coughs> Excuse me. And the fourth one is kids. You may not have kids. You may never have taught kids. But this is an opportunity for you to come together and have somebody teach the children and make sure that they are being formed as disciples of Jesus. We're in need of the Spirit to show up. To make his presence known. We're in need of one another. So that we can grow up into the, as the body of Christ. The Soma. And lastly. And what this passage says. And what this time is going to be essential. Is in we're in need of regular habits and practices. To abide in Christ. We're regular habits and practices. The word that you see over and over in this passage. Is the word abide. And in the Greek, it's used in different tenses. And some of those tenses are active participation. It's a, something uh, that we regularly do. It's a habit. It's a commitment that we make to a long-term habit. It's something we do over and over again. What Eugene Peterson says, a long obedience in the same direction. That we believe that the Spirit is what, who transforms us. It's a Spirit that brings Jesus to our, our reality, but it's also our active participation with the Spirit in putting ourselves in environments where He can actually do that very thing. So as disciples of Jesus, you and I need to grow in regular habits and practices. This is what the... Form to Flourish uh, series throughout the year has been about. And it's with this that I'm excited to introduce to you something that we've been developing a long while that you should have in your hands. And this is what we're calling the Disciple, uh, so, excuse me, Soma's Discipleship Toolkit. This is uh, 20 plus different tools and resources for you personally and to grow as a disciple, to grow in habits and practices, but also for you to be a disciple maker 
You know which tool to use for different people at different times in ways that they can grow. In a few moments, after I go through this portion, you're gonna have an opportunity to discuss what areas you are in need to grow as a disciple. And we wanna start with that as the foundation of discipleship, our need for God, and ways in which you're going to commit to actively participating in the Spirit's work in your life. So I, there's one of these for each family. If you need more, please reach out. We, ha we can print more of these off. It's also going to be um, print, uh, excuse me, posted at Soma Connect. And so this all is laid out in five different categories. Gospel basics, gospel fluency, the Bible, prayer, and slow down. So I'm just going to go through those these briefly and uh, draw your attention to a few different things. The gospel basics section of this is in essence Soma Foundations. It's Soma 101. This is what it the means to be a gospel-centered people. What is the gospel? How does the gospel give us a new identity that fuels us how to live? This is a great section if you're new to Soma and want to know what we're all about. Or if you're a disciple maker and you're, if people are wondering what is the gospel and they're trying to figure it out. These are a great foundation and a place to start for them. The second category is gospel fluency. You've been hanging out with us any period of time. You know when we say fluency, we mean it's being able to apply the gospel to any person in any situation at any time. It, the gospel is our mother tongue. It's what we filter everything through. It's how we see the world. And so these are tools in growing in gospel fluency. The one I want to draw your attention to is the first one there, uh, what we're calling family discipleship. We spent time to develop a resource to equip you and your core family as parents to lead devotions and times of worship in your family. And so that is a tool. If you're like, man, we're home so much. How am I growing and discipling my children? That is a wonderful tool that we want to lead you towards. The third category is the Bible. We believe that the Bible is absolutely necessary and essential for growing as disciples of Jesus. This is God's word. This is God breathed um, to us for our growing up, as 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says. And so I want to, there's a few different tools in there. I want to draw your attention to what we're calling the Love Bible Study. Love, um, what this is, is a, it's a four different practices, and it's a tool that we've created and a process to walk through and, and learning how to study the Bible in a more robust way. This stands for listening to the story, finding out where in that passage this, this is found in the story of God, but also recognizing the context it's in, observing the text, learning how to actually study the Bible and find out what that passage is meaning, viewing Jesus, all, realizing that all of scriptures point to Jesus and learning how to trace whatever passage you're in to the, how Jesus is the ABC, the answer, the better, or the culmination. And then exhort to live, that we don't just want to fill our heads, we want to change our lives. I want to use this t time to call you, to as a micro MC, to some of you are used to using your midweek time to study a book. What I, I'd rather... And what we're calling you to is something different, to use that time for seeing those that don't yet believe, engage, and, and those that are in your micro-missional community that don't yet believe, use it for them. And we're doing something, we're offering a Bible study this next uh, few months. We're going to go do a deeper dive into Daniel, walking through this process, starting tomorrow night. And so if you want to dive in, that's a way to do it. We will be providing a workbook for that series. So whether you can join us on Monday evenings from 8 to 9 on Zoom, or you just want to do it in your own time or in your DNA, you have a workbook to dive into the scriptures more. We want you to love the Bible. The fourth practice or the fourth category is prayer. We believe that prayer is essential to growing as a disciple. And so let me draw your attention to a few, a few of these. If you're in need of growing 
the habit of prayer. I, I would draw your attention to what we're calling praying uh, circles and cycles. This is uh, concentric circles of prayer, different people starting with yourself and your family, your DNA group, your missional community, your, and beyond, and praying every day for a different category, a different um, cycle throughout the week. And so if you're needing to grow in a habit of prayer, I'd encourage you to look there. If you're needing to grow in the skill of prayer, I would encourage you to look at the acts pattern of prayer. This is a great tool of, of adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication, where every time you're going through four different ways of praying and growing in that habit. If you already have a pretty solid prayer life and you're wanting to take it deeper, I would draw your attention to the contemplative and listening prayer. This is joining with the Christian, Christian mystics from centuries past, learning how to have our soul unite with the triune God through a process called Divina Lect... Uh, the, we're just calling God... Uh, excuse me. Contemplative listening and prayer. And so, this Lectio Divina, this process allows you to have your soul transformed one-on-one. -on -one. Listen to the Spirit in a whole new way. And then the last... Category here is the slow down disciplines that we've talked about this last year of fasting, silence, solitude, and Sabbath. Uh, putting ourselves in a place of need, whether it's the daily practice of silence, the weekly practice of Sabbath, or the regular practice of solitude. So I don't know where it is. You may have other tools that fit these categories. This isn't a, we're forcing you into this. What this is, is an opportunity for you to grow as a disciple, recognizing your need for the Spirit and one another. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to invite you to have a conversation. And that conversation is going to be about where do you need to grow as a disciple? Which category do you need to grow in? Which tool are you going to commit to? And how can we recognize our need for one another? And if there's any other conversation that needs to be had about the details of organizing these times and months ahead, we want to provide it. Remember, this is a, a week that we're setting up for the weeks and months ahead. Our shortened sermons in the, uh, through Daniel are going to help facilitate this, but we know that our need for the Spirit for one another and to grow as disciples and regular practices and habits are essential for you and for us to be fruitful in this time ahead. Let me pray. Father, thank you for this. I pray by your spirit, you are helping us see our need for you, our need for one another, and regular practices and habits to grow into. So I pray for my brothers and sisters as they go into their conversation that you guide them in how you are calling them to grow. You are calling them to experience you and you are calling them to serve and love one another well. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.